Hi all, I'm Avneet. I work with Informatica GCS and today we're going to go ahead and talk about JBoss Plus page. I'm going to go ahead and break this into two sections, part one and part two. In part one, I'm going to go ahead and talk about configuration changes that you need to do for a successful cluster. In part two, we're going to go ahead and talk about how we can troubleshoot a cluster and how we can go ahead and deploy MDM on a cluster. To start with, I'm just going to go ahead and share, share a slide in which I'm going to talk about you know, the, the, the main points that we're going to discuss in this presentation. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the communication protocol. What I mean in here is what protocol will the nodes use in a JBoss cluster to communicate to each other. Next important thing I'm going to talk about is when we are creating a JBoss domain, that domain should always be based on the all template. We should not use any other template because all the dependent jar files that are required for a cluster are not available in those templates. In the end, we're going to go ahead and talk about the parameters that are required that we can provide in the startup scripts or we can have in the configuration file while we started a node which will join a cluster. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, go to my party session. This is my machine where I already have a cluster started. But I'm going to go ahead and talk about all the configuration changes that I need to do in order for me to go ahead and successfully start a cluster. So as if you remember, I was talking about the protocol that we need to decide upon. So once we've decided upon the protocol, it could be either a UDP or a TCP, we need to go ahead and you know make sure the JGroup configuration for that protocol is correct. So the configuration file is basically placed in the domain under deploy directory, under deploy you have a cluster folder, under cluster you have a JGroup stack folder, in there you have those configuration files. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, go there. end folder I'm going to do an ls and this is the file I'm looking at which tells me what all stacks are available for jgroups that I can choose for jgroup to help me to help the nodes communicate with each other in today's example in the cluster that I have I already have configured TCP to be the stack that my cluster should use as communic as a communication protocol and I've also chosen the option of a gossip router. Gossip router is, uh, is something which is recommended for a high availability cluster. What happens is when you are using a TCP based uh, protocol stack without a gossip router, then you have to tell your uh, node what all members are available. So you've got to individually list down all the node addresses. And then if you have to ever scale that cluster, then you have to edit those files and add the new IP addresses or remove the addresses. It could be IP address, it could be a host name. Instead of that, you could use a gossip router. Think of it just as a socket and your nodes are put, pushing the message to that socket. The other nodes are listening on that socket and that's how your communication is working based using TCP protocol. And the option, the advantage with, with the gossip router is that you can have multiple gossip routers. So I can have a primary gossip router, I can have a secondary gossip router. If the primary gossip router goes down, the communication communication can be switched to the secondary gossip router. Now, let's go ahead and have a look at the file. So this is a file which lists down all the protocol I have. For example, in, in here you're, going, you're seeing a UDP based protocol. So I come down, there's another option for a UDP based protocol. I'm going to go ahead and search for TCP. This is the standard TCP based protocol configuration. Below it is the standard TCP sync based protocol configuration. So, so what I'm going to use is I'm going to use the TCP based protocol communication, but I'm going to modify this configuration to use a gossip router. So by default, if you, if you look at the configuration, these are the entries that are available and it has the TCP ping entry which is telling and in there I have this parameter which tells what are the nodes. For example, if I had three servers server 1, server 2, server 3, I would have given server 1, port number, comma, server 2, port number, 
comma server three port number and tomorrow if I had to add a new node to this cluster I would have had to edit this file on all the nodes and get, do a comma server for port number instead of that I'm using a gossip router in where I don't need to I can add as many nodes and I can tell each node that they have to go to this gossip router to join a cluster plus I can ha I have an advantage of primary and secondary so if the primary goes down the communication is switched to the secondary all right saying that this was the configuration that, that was required for me to choose the stack that I want to use now we're talking about gossip router so the question is how do we start a gossip router is it a separate utility that I have to download no so gossip router is a uh, is a utility within jgroups and uh, what you got to do is you got to execute this command in which you got to give the class path you got to tell what the path of the jgroup file and also you got to refer to the client folder under jboss and have common logins jar in the class path then you give this gossip router as the class name you give the port number you give the bind address which could be either the IP or the host name now remember if you're giving the IP then even in the stack file you have to give it give the IP address because your gossip router is bound, binded to that address okay so let me show you the script that I've created it's a very simple script if you have it, it's a uh, this is the script that I've used in there I'm giving minus port option and all I do is before I cluster I, I'm going to go ahead and execute the script and then do a ps minus e grep command to ensure that you know my server router is up and running you could do this and it will, it's going to go ahead and show you this command okay once I've done that now I have to go ahead and start my nodes so for that what you got to simply do is you can create scripts to start up nodes in this I'm just going to show you a small sample that I have created. In this script, I'm given the parameters that are required for, for a successful configuration of a cluster. So minus C is telling me the domain that I'm going to use, minus B is the, is the address that I'm binding my node to, minus G is the name of the cluster. This has to be the same across all the nodes. Messaging server peer ID tells the unique ID of that node so each node has to have a unique identifier associated to it and it has to be a number it cannot be an alphanumeric number so you gotta make sure you go you're, you you know you're giving a unique number and if you don't do that you're gonna start seeing errors when the secondary node comes up it's gonna say this server peer ID is already existing or is already a pad of cluster so you you know you know that you've not given the right server peer ID the next parameter that I'm gonna go ahead and uh, provide in my script is is this which is basically telling what port policy to use it's not required but for instance if I'm running three instances of JBoss on the same machine they cannot use the same port right so then I'm going to use this option to assign a specific set of ports to each node so port 01 means the port for this server is going to use 8180 port 02 means it's going to use 8280 port 03 means it's going to use 8380 for HTTP communication, uh, HTTP based uh, port. Next parameter that is required when you're choosing an alternative protocol stack other than UDP is default JGroup stack, which tells me, which tells the cluster what stack to use. Basically, it's going to go ahead and refer to the channel stack file that we had edited earlier and it's going to read that configuration from there. And that's how it's going to know that we're going to use a gossip router. The next parameter that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and provide this variable. This variable is a uh, is, is a recommended variable if you're using a gossip router, so that you tell your JGroups what is the what is the initial address of the gossip router. And again, this you could provide multiple gossip routers by separating them with a comma. And it the the if if so if the primary gossip router goes down it's automatically going to switch to the secondary gossip router the other three parameters are just uh, random parameters you know I'm using them for uh, JMX uh, remote debugging to you know keep a monitor on on the health of my JBoss those are not required for a cluster so what if I had to use a UDP based protocol do I need to give all the parameters that I'm giving in here the answer is no 
So if I'm using a UDP based protocol, I don't need to provide this parameter. I also don't need to provide this parameter because if I don't if I don't give this parameter, then it's going to automatically use UDP. And all I need to do is edit this file to a hyphen u space the UDP address that my servers are going to use to communicate. And this UDP address has to be same across all the nodes. So you cannot give a different address in each node then those nodes will not communicate to each other because they are going to a different address so this was it these are the changes that you need to do to start your cluster if you need more information about a cluster I highly recommend that you actually go ahead and go to the Red Hat site and you read the configuration guide and uh, thoroughly goes with the cluster topic because th there are a lot of information about each variable, each configuration change, why it's done, what impact it has, what what available options you have, what different type of protocols are available. So you could always go ahead and uh, refer this before you actually go ahead and start deploy your own cluster. Saying that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and end this topic. I would welcome your uh, feedback on support videos at informatica.com and if you feel like you can also go ahead and uh, tweet about it on Twitter. Thank you.